external and internal forces. We are assaulted from all sides. Threatened by disease, damage, and death. But nature has given us defenses. The body is self-healing. Our immune system is constantly fighting attack from bacteria, viruses, and parasites. If we injure our bodies, then armies of cells are released to treat the wound and repair the damage. From earliest times, we've tried to aid or surpass nature in our battles for health and survival. The Egyptians used much of their wealth to explore medical treatments. Many operations were done. These ranged from circumcision and the removal of cysts and tumors to the setting of broken bones. Embalming dead bodies for mummification involved removing the major organs to stop them rotting. The Egyptians were the first people to develop a written knowledge of anatomy and surgery. In the 20th century, our understanding of the body has progressed faster than in all man's previous history. Wilhelm Rutgen, a German scientist, discovered X-rays by chance in 1895. We now use ever more complicated methods to see inside ourselves. Thermal imaging, radio waves, and magnetism allow us to explore inside the body from outside. To fight disease and infection, we've developed vaccines Many diseases which in the past decimated whole societies have been eradicated. Penicillin, discovered in 1928, was the first antibiotic to be successfully used in treating bacterial infections. As a result, now increasingly complicated transplants can be carried out. We can replace diseased or damaged organs. But the most important discovery of the last century was that of the structure of DNA in 1953. Each cell in our body contains our genetic makeup, the blueprint that allows scientists to work out how we are what we are. With the mapping of the human genome, it may be possible in the future to eradicate defects and genetic diseases forever. Our understanding of DNA and how cells work has opened the door to a new form of medical science, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology combines biotechnology with atomic electronics. It is the technology of building very, very small things. Molecular manufacturing. This cog is so small it can pass through the eye of a needle. But true nanomachines will be thousands of times smaller. It sounds like science fiction, but then landing on the moon sounded like science fiction too in the 1930s. And, uh, People who really looked at the question at that time knew that landing on the moon was possible because you could work out the engineering details of the fuels and the forces and the temperatures and so on. And we can work out the forces and the energies and so on for moving atoms around and think about what that implies. And the conclusion you come to sounds like science fiction, but none of the steps along the way are anything but science. In the future, with nanotechnology, we'll be able to build surgical tools that are molecular both in size and precision we'll be able to inject them into the human body so that they can intervene at the level that damage actually occurs and reverse it. Nature has already developed motors a billionth of a meter across. Cilia in bacteria are very small propellers. At their base are tiny motors that run on the electric charge difference between the bacterium and their environment. If it can be done in nature, man's ingenuity soon make artificial versions possible.